Well, did you announce you're having a boy? Did what? Did you announce you're having a boy? No. <laughs> I'm having a boy. Having a boy. <laughs> <laughs> young boy. All right, so if any of you do any testing in, in your Ruby on Rails app, you probably are accustomed to writing at least unit tests. Um, if you're more into testing, you might also do unit tests and say Cucumber to cover some of the front end, um, which is what I was doing up until recently and I decided what I wanted to do was unit test some of my JavaScript. Um, I try to keep my JavaScript, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, modularized uh, in such a way that it is unit testable, um, but I just never really gotten around to it. Um, there, as far as I knew, weren't that many great tools to getting it done. And then I heard about Evergreen, and Evergreen relies upon uh, <coughs> another library um, that I believe got started with Node, Node.js in that world, called Jasmine. And Jasmine is kind of like RSpec for JavaScript. It, it looks, it kind of wants to be RSpec to an extent, which is really nice for me because I'm familiar with RSpec. So Evergreen is uh, a, a gem that you can use. Uh, let's just find it real quick. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> forget, forget it. <coughs> let's get to the end real quick. So you can use it in Rails 2. You can use it. Um, in Rails 3, obviously, I believe you can get it set up if, as long as you get your uh, directory structure correct to use it in something that is neither or that is not Rails at all. Um, but it, it uh, aside from using Jasmine, it adds uh, a couple nice helpers to it that I will show you here real quick. So first of all, let's just pretend that we have a very small. Uh, JavaScript library that we want to test. So all this really does is uh, prompts a user as to whether they really want to remove uh, a photo uh, upon clicking a, a link. So no big deal. But I wanted to unit test something like that. So in Jasmine uh, you would write something like this and like I said it looks a lot like RSpec. You've got describe statements um, and the it statements, and unfortunately the screen is tiny, so you're missing some of this over here, but it's not too interesting. So that's awesome. Now a couple of things that Evergreen adds is the require lines, oops, <clears throat> which is kind of awesome, and all it really does is uh, takes that string and puts it in a, a script tag um, in the their script runner HTML essentially. Uh, and the other thing it adds is these the template line here, um, basically so that you can just create a really small template um, that has just the HTML that you need to make this unit test work, and it will um, only run the tests in that describe block there against that template. So kind of awesome. Uh, a few of the other things here, real quick, um, this is obviously just calling that uh, function in our library to set up the, the click event. So this is spying on the window object uh, and expecting a confirm to be called, essentially. And so that happens down here. You expect confirm to have been called with, oops, are you sure you want to remove this photo? So pretty straightforward. Um, I really, I actually wrote, before we get to this next slide that is in CoffeeScript, I actually wrote uh, a full test suite in JavaScript, and I didn't completely hate it. I, I kind of like JavaScript, though, so uh, that was part of it. But then, uh, actually yesterday, when I was thinking about the fact that Joel was going to give the CoffeeScript presentation, I thought, I think you can rewrite in Evergreen by default, you can rewrite your specs in CoffeeScript, and it just sees that it's a .coffee extension on the file, and it compiles it for you and then runs them. So that's awesome. You don't, you don't need even Barista, you don't need anything. Uh, 
just basically call it a coffee file, throw coffee in that file, obviously, and you've got it done. So in this case, the there's your, you don't really lose that many lines of JavaScript or lines of code between the two. Um, it is a lot less syntax, which is pretty noticeable, especially just with this right down here. It doesn't exist over here. Other than that, it's pretty much everything Joel showed you. But it is an awesome way to test your JavaScript, or actually, obviously, you could test your CoffeeScript uh, in CoffeeScript. So this is what it looks like you run evergreen serve on the command line. It gives you a, an executable evergreen. Um, and it comes up with this, and I only have the one in this particular screenshot that I took. I only had the one uh, spec file. And then if you were to click that spec file, it looks a little bit like this. This middle section, which I disagree with their choice to put that where they put it, but whatever. Because uh, really what I care about is this stuff down here, the actual results. Uh, and I had four specs, no failures in this case. But this is the, uh, the template for the last test that ran, essentially. So that's what it looks like when everything works all right. And this is what just that results section would look like if I had something broken or uh, an incorrect expectation or what have you. So that is a very quick rundown of Evergreen and Jasmine. Yeah? Can you uh, put Evergreen into continuous integration? Yes. Um, I don't remember exactly how to do that. There is an Evergreen run instead of an Evergreen serve. Uh, that runs stuff via the command line. Um, I haven't tested to make sure that it also exits with the proper exit code. Um, I'm assuming it does or they wouldn't have it in there, but as I, I say that, but at the same time, the evergreen serve command, at least on my machine, I can't get to stop without killing it uh, completely, giving it, a, sending it a sig kill. So like I can't even, I can't just control C and get it to stop. So. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in that particular executable, unfortunately. Other than that, it's awesome, though. <laughs> Are you saying a polite kill or nine? Nine. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't, I, yeah, I can't, I can't get it to do anything, and I don't know why. You gotta be sure to decide to move it. And it actually uses, I believe, Capybara's uh, server in some way, like it uses that, that server class. Hmm. From, from Capybara, but you know, so I don't know. Anyway, there that is. If anybody's interested, I think that's uh, all. All we've got tonight, right? Stuff testing. Incidentally, I thought I'd mention we also do have an IRC channel on Freenode.net. Uh, it is pound indie RV. So if you want to go in there and chat or get some help or provide some help or what have you. That's always available. I think we're finished. Thanks, everybody.